All right, guys, we're outside. We're going on a little nature walk because we're starting our unit in ecology. Woo, exciting. It's a beautiful day outside, and I thought we would you know, enjoy this nature while we are talking about our very first part of this ecology unit. So in this video, we're gonna you know, define what ecology is, first of all, and we're actually gonna jump straight into talking about endangered and threatened species. Um, we're gonna find out what they are, we're gonna learn the definitions, um, we're gonna talk about the groups and legislation that's been passed to work um, towards helping endangered species, and we're also going to talk about what could make a species endangered or threatened. And you're going to be able to define some examples in North Carolina, where we are right now. Uh, Let's review the levels of organization that we talked about way at the beginning of the year. So this is important so we get the whole scope of what we're looking at here in biology. So we start at the really small level with atoms and molecules. That's our first level of organization. And then these molecules will fit together to make bigger pieces, like um, we'll have a molecule that is a lipid, a phospholipid, that'll make the cell membrane of a cell or the membrane of an organelle. And together, those organelles make a cell. And then a bunch of cells together is going to make what we call a tissue here. And then the tissues put together are going to make organs and then organ systems. And finally, a bunch of organ systems together will make an individual or an organism. So what comes after that? So we have our individual or our organism. And that population is going to be a group of organisms that mate with one another and live in the same place at the same time. After that level, we have communities. And communities are made up of different populations that interact with one another. So rabbits and hawks might be a part of a community. Um, and there's going to be many communities within one ecosystem. All right, so an ecosystem is a community or several communities, and it's non-living surroundings. So we, here we have both biotic and abiotic factors. And remember, the A means without or not. So biotic would be living. Abiotic would be all those non-living things. So an ecosystem would include water, it would include rocks, and it would include all the communities within it. Okay, when looking at our levels of organization, sometimes we might also see the level biome. Now, a biome is just a global ecosystem located in a specific portion of the world. So I'm sure you've heard of deserts and, for and different types of forests and um, different types of oceans. And these biomes are going to be characterized by the quantity of rainfall per year in this specific geographical area. And finally, our biggest level is the biosphere. Now, this is the living world and all the biotic and abiotic factors that affect life within it. This is the biggest level we've got. Biology, which is the study of living things, but ecology is a part of that. Because ecology is going to be the study of interactions of biotic and abiotic factors of organisms in environmental systems. Now, abiotic is going to mean non-living things. Remember, a means without or not. So abiotic would be things like the sunlight, or heat, or water, or the land. Biotic is going to be all the living things, all the organisms in an environmental system. Got it? So there's some joggers up ahead, but I'm just going to keep talking to you guys like a crazy person because education is important. Yeah! In 1973, the Endangered Species Act was passed, and in it they said they wanted to protect and recover species that were at risk of becoming endangered, as well as the environments that they're dependent on. So in the Endangered Species Act, or ESA, species are listed depending on, on how at risk they are of extinction. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service are the government agencies in the U.S. that are in charge of this act. So if you go to their website, or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service website, you can actually look at the endangered species in North Carolina. Now these species that they list include both plants and animals. And some of the ones in North Carolina we can see are uh, the red wolf, there are several bats that are listed as endangered. You can see over here there's an E for endangered and a T for threatened. If we scroll down the list, on the animal section, we can see lots of sea turtles that are listed as endangered or threatened, several whales, um, there's even a flying squirrel that's listed as endangered, and a red wo woodpecker as well. Here's the difference between endangered and threatened. Now a threatened species is just at risk of becoming endangered. What endangered means is a species that it's, is at risk of extinction in a significant portion or all of its range. Now these agencies work hard uh, to protect these threatened and endangered species, and it's part of the act. So it's against the law to take a threatened or endangered species without a permit, and taking actually includes a lot of different 
means things. So taking in this sense means you cannot harass, harm, pursue, hunt, shoot, wound, kill, trap, capture, or collect an endangered or threatened species. Now, uh, pursue is an interesting one because it includes, uh, it means chasing that might interfere with their survival or reproduction. So, for example, a whale watching boat couldn't pursue uh, certain types of whales that would be listed as endangered because it might interfere with their regular normal behaviors. There's also recovery plans um, that are going to describe the steps needed to restore these species. So we have an action plan to try to prevent these species from going all the way extinct. Um, several species sometimes come off the uh, endangered list and go down to the threatened list. Others get off the list entirely. So that's always great when that happens. So a lot of this involves habitat conservation um, because we want to make sure these organisms have access to the habitats that they need. And so these habitat conservation plans assess impacts on the species due to changes in habitat. And they're going to outline steps uh, to mitigate the impacts. So thinking of development, if we're going to build a new area over here, what is that going to do to the organisms in the area? Is that going to impact any of the endangered species that we're looking out for? More than 1,300 species of plants and animals are listed as endangered or threatened in the United States. The biggest reasons for um, a species becoming endangered or threatened, especially in North Carolina, is going to be habitat loss. When the species habitat is taken over um, by humans or when there's some sort of environmental cause that's going to ruin or disturb the environment they would normally live in, uh, that species can no longer survive like they normally would. And um, they will eventually become extinct. Another cause for a species becoming endangered is overharvest, which means we hunt them too much or um, they are consumed too much by several different predators. Oh my gosh, it's our Dia Herodias or Great Blue Heron. Look, there he is.